Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God and it is he who made us. And we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Jesus said, anyone who receives you, receives me. And anyone who receives me, receives the Father who sent me. Friends, we gather today in the presence of God, who receives us with open arms, who loves us unconditionally, and who bids us do the same to one another. Let's worship God. In Psalm 28, David said, To you, Lord, I call. You are my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you remain silent, I will be like those who go down to the pit. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help. As I lift up my hands, 
towards your most holy place. Let us pray for those who need to be remembered today. For those who have made the news headlines this week because of what they've done or said, we remember. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For those we know who will have difficulty coping with life today, we remember. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For those who are in hospital, in care, in prison, or in a place that is strange to them, we remember. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For those the words peace and justice bring to mind, we remember Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And for ourselves, we pray. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. David continued his prayer. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song, I praise him.
Matthew 10, 40 to 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Most people. Most people love to smile. Most people love to laugh. Most people love to see other people smile and laugh too. Most people are good people. Most people want to help when they see someone crying. Most people want to help when they see someone who is in trouble. Most people want to make other people, even strangers, feel good. Most people are very good people. Some people do bad things. They yell bad words. They lie and steal. They bully and hurt and destroy. But most people don't do these things. If you could line up all the people who want to be good and all the people who want to be bad, the good line would stretch from here to the tallest mountain. All the people in the bad line could crowd together in a dark and gloomy room. People who do bad things can change. There is a seed of goodness inside them waiting to sprout. Most people love the sunshine. Most people love the earth. Most people love watching things grow. A person who is frowning and mad or sad or mean is like a sour grape in a bunch of sweet grapes. That person would almost rather be happy, smiling and laughing. Everyone looks nicer when they smile and laugh. When you see something bad happening, you may soon see someone trying to help. The helper might be you. Someone is always there being good, because being good is what most people do. Most people like to run and dance and play, or share stories with someone they know, or snuggle with someone they love. Most people like a kind word. Most people like thinking about good thoughts about others. Most people smile when they see a baby. Most people glow when they hear or say, I love you. Most people in the world know that. Most people are very good. In this series, we're going to travel across Queensland in Australia to explore how the Church of Jesus Christ is responding to the challenge of living the Gospel story in the 21st century. We're sitting in on a group of teenage boys and dads. Bruce Mullen from Uniting World is preparing them for a two-week exposure tour to Papua New Guinea. Sounds like just a missional program, doesn't it? But maybe there's more going on here. This begins with the discipleship experience of one man. I, I never really saw myself as a, uh, as a, you know, your traditional youth leader type people. I, I'm very much, a, I guess, a one-on-one -on -one sort of person when it comes to relating to people. I was very aware of the fact that it was a long-term commitment. And I guess this, this trip to, uh, to New Guinea is, is something that's more or less an extension of that. Andrew is a unique person. Uh, Andrew actually packed up himself and went and lived in New Guinea in the Highlands for two years as, a, as an Australian volunteer. I guess it, was a, it wasn't the easiest two years I've ever had, but it was probably one of the most rewarding and, and very, um, I guess, very much a, a, a personal building uh, time. It's, it's a, an aspect of my life that was, that was interesting and, and, uh, and I guess a life-changing experience and in a way it'd be nice to, to share that with some of these young fellas. He actually said, I'm going to make it my goal. To, to work with these kids over an extended period of time, to disciple them, to build a relationship with them, and then to offer them 
the opportunity to experience just a little bit of what I've experienced. And it's the base of his discipleship, basically. That's it. That's their, that's their focus. Well, I, I hope that the number one thing is that, that people build a relationship with the, with the individuals and with the, the, the community as a whole in Papua New Guinea, where we're going. It will be good for us to go over there because I think it will really encourage them to see that they're not just alone by themselves, that other people are there around the world helping them. But, but ultimately, it's, um, yeah, it's about <coughs> sharing that, that um, compassion that, that Christ had for, for his people on earth in yeah, giving them the necessities of life, including um, deepening that relationship with him. I think one of the, the challenges is for the church to see mission is not the church's activity, it's God's activity. And so the, it's almost like the starting point for mission is to ask a question, what, what is God already doing? Where is their hope? Where is their good news? And how can the church be a part of that? It's not about people becoming like us, but together, working with people in the community, how can we become good news for our community? The, the church here is a really, it's a large dynamic church. Uh, and when I first came here two years ago, there was, it's been very active in ministry in many different areas. But one of the challenges we had was how, how do we see ourselves incarnate in the community that we're a part of. So we, we had a, a time of, of thinking and praying and planning. And, and looking at where our church is located in the community. We're across the road from a school, and so thinking we need to be doing some mission in the school. Most of us have people we connect with naturally because of something we have in common. It could be family connections, living in the same neighbourhood, or sharing a similar ethnic background. It's helpful to consciously choose to build our connections and look for God's cues for conversation. Meet Jeff, a retiree with a passion for motorcycling. He and his wife Marion have joined the local Ulysses Bike Club, discovering a group of new friends who share their passion. They are there for a good time, but they're also looking for ways to put their discipleship into practice. I'm a member of the Rector of Ulysses Bike Club, yeah. I, I happen to be the oldest member of the Ulysses Club at Redcliffe at the moment. They socialise once a week and then also ride once a week. Jeff and his wife Marion did not enter the bikey scene only looking to ride bikes, but brought their faith in Christ with them. Yeah, well my wife and I are in Ulysses as Christians and walking in with our eyes open knowing the sort of community we're walking into and uh, but nevertheless feeling that we needed to reflect uh, the things we believe in and, and who we believe in. I guess there's happened to have been plenty of occasions in Ulysses where they've utilised the fact that I've been a Christian. <laughs> I've had jobs to do with things like um, um, Memorial Days where we remember people who have ridden on and for the inaugural Memorial Day they asked me could I, could I say something and uh, so I did. I, I, I talked about life and death, and and I talked about my belief. And if you're going to be salt and light to the community, you got to be where they can see you. I I know when I read parish notices that I could be occupied as a retired person just about every day of the week, just about every night of the week. I couldn't see myself living as a Christian in a cloistered community. Got to get out there. Mission Stories. The edited collection of stories are meant to prompt our thinking about what it means to be the church in our current context. One, an example of a person who admitted they never saw themselves as a youth leader or youth worker, but between combining their own gifts and their own story of journeying to another country, they become 
a useful mentor and holder of the story for a group seeking to be exposed to mission in the same place. Another is an example of a church that's quite vibrant and active, recognises that it needs to connect to the community in new and different ways, whether that is a food bank affordable supermarket, soup kitchen, contacts with a local school. It's not doing what they were doing, but working out how is it they came to be inspired to do that thing or those things. There are other examples in the Mission Story series about churches that engaged with local council and took a small interactive live animal and acted Christmas experience into the town square in a well-funded, renowned and important exploration of the Christmas story that happens in civil society. Then again, an older person who doesn't see themselves as being on rosters or committees or contributing yet another leadership gift to yet another program, but pursues their own interest, pursues their own passion. And in that way, they are identified by others as a person of depth, a person with a spirituality who has a story that means they might be just the right person to invite into a memorial setting or to say a few words about spirituality or life from that perspective. All varied and different examples of engaging in God's mission in the world, of looking around to see where God might already be active or to see what hurts and hopes in the community we might be able to meet by combining our passions and interests, our gifts and our ability to engage. Just as rose down love. 
darkness Trust in the light and may love be the path I walk upon How long will these bones fall and bodies get twisted and broken? How long will these voices keep shouting loud insults and slogans? Teach me to do what is right. Me to do what is right. Work in the darkness, trust in the Must we cry out till justice rolls down like a river? Teach me to do what is right. Work in the darkness, trust. Darkness Christ has nobody now but yours No hand, no feet on earth but yours Yours are the eyes with which he sees Yours are the Yours are the hand with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hand.
Folks, these video resources have now stretched over at least 12 or more weeks. They've created an opportunity and a space for reflection, for questions, to listen to scripture, to spend time in prayer. As we close in on an opportunity to resume gathered worship, don't let go of the opportunity to think about church differently. Don't let go of the opportunity to think about what new forms of gathering, what new ways of engaging with the community and what new use of your own gifts or passions might connect with God's hopes and desires for the world. God's hope of reconciling and renewing God's mission in the world. As we close out on this time of worship together, may you have found these resources helpful and meaningful in some way. They have sought to offer a contemporary form of worship and a different style this may well be required in coming weeks in many places where, for the foreseeable future, communal singing is ill-advised. Best wishes and God's blessing during this time of COVID-19. Let's see what the future brings, a new and different way of exploring our faith, practising our discipleship, and seeking God in the world in order to join in God's actions in all places. Amen.
go mami and cheerna hu, agus go goody she hu. The Lord met the light of his face, and the goodness of his heart to be brecht upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Facă să lumineze fața lui peste Jehova, pirumul cam nindemei lui Arti, nenecă să mad. Cosi fuini ala fia.